On the gluteus maximus here, in the posterior portion of the thigh, the origin, if you can remember from the skeletal system, would be iliac crest, as well as portions of the sacrum and the coccyx. So that would be the origin. While the insertion, you're going to look at the fascia lata muscle, and then of course the gluteal tuberosity, which we can't see here in this model. When this contracts, that would allow you to extend and laterally rotate the thigh. And so extend and laterally rotate the thigh. Removing the gluteus maximus muscle allows us to see the gluteus medius, which has an origin on the ilium and an insertion in the greater trochanter. So again, we wouldn't be able to see it necessarily on this model, but know that the insertion point, the point that would move would be the greater trochanter. That's important to understand the action, which is to abduct, abduct, and immediately rotate the thigh. So abduct, and immediately rotate the thigh of the gluteus medius muscle. Now remember when it comes to the quadriceps, I said if you learn the compartments of the leg and you can learn their actions separately, that will help you. So the anterior compartment of the leg extends the leg at the knee. These muscles here adduct, bring toward the midline, your ad adductors, and the posterior compartment would flex leg at the knee. So anterior, posterior, adductors. And so if we look here at these three muscles, we have our vastus medialis, rectus femoris, and vastus lateralis, with the vastus intermedius being underneath the rectus femoris. The origin of the rectus femoris, the point that doesn't move, is your anterior, inferior iliac spine. So it would be on those coxal bones, the anterior, inferior iliac spine. The insertion is gonna be the tibial tuberosity on the tibia, so the point that does move. So we say that it extends the leg at the knee because of that extension all the way down here. You're gonna see some familiarities within these. If you go to the vastus lateralis, the origin is going to be the greater, greater trochanter, as well as the parts of the linea aspera on the femur. The insertion, again, tibial tuberosity. Action extends leg at the knee. The vastus medialis. Origin, linea aspera on the femur. Insertion, tibial tuberosity. Action extends leg at the knee. And so if you're trying to memorize some of these, maybe you memorize that these three groups here are the, the quadriceps muscles because their insertion and their action are the same. I've removed the rectus femoris so that we can see the vastus intermedius muscle underneath. The origin being anterior surface of the femur. The insertion again being, can you guess, tibial tuberosity because what does it do? Extends the leg at the knee. So your quadriceps have the same insertion and same action. That's four right there. That would be really easy to learn. Since we're up here, if you look here at the sartorius muscle, the origin again is gonna be on the pelvis, so anterior superior iliac spine. The insertion being, if we move down, the medial portion or medial surface of the tibia. The action of these inner muscles flex leg and thigh. And so this muscle, they call it the Taylor's muscle because it allows you to cross your legs. Moving back over here, the gracilis, the origin is going to be the ramus, the ramus and pubis, while the insertion, if we go down, medial surface of tibia. And this, because it's here in this medial compartment, that adducts the thigh. These were your adductors. I've talked about that in lab several times as far as learning the action based on where they are. It might help you get a few of these. And then finally, we just have two more, gastrocnemius, the origin being the medial and lateral condyle of the femur. The insertion all the way down here, with this Achilles tendon is the calcaneus. And what's it going to do? Well, it's in the posterior compartment of the leg, so it's probably a flexor. It's going to flex the foot. And then we look at the soleus underneath, if I can get this removed. We have the soleus muscle with the origin being the superior tibia, insertion again being the calcaneus, and it's going to allow you to flex the ankle. You'll find those actions a little different if you're reading through Patton, but for our lab manual, we're calling the gastrocnemius, the action flexes foot, soleus flexes ankle. So please spend some time with these, spend some time with the lab manual and with your textbook. Let me know if there are any questions. 20, question, 20 points will come from origin, insertion, action, 
based on the lab manual. Um, good luck learning. Let me know if you need any help.